Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Francisca Malfi. I'm from the Center for Medical Genetics at the Ghent University Hospital in uh, Belgium. And I am also the Chief Scientific Officer uh, for the Iris Danlos Society. And today I will talk about the meaning of mutations and variants of unknown significance. Our DNA is a molecule that contains our hereditary material and thus the biological instructions that make each species and each individual unique. It consists of a four letter code containing four letters A for adenine, T for thymine, G for guanine and C for cytosin. Our DNA is present in each cell of our body and is organized on chromosomes. And each of our cells, except for the egg and sperm cells, contain 46 chromosomes. So here are uh, a few fun facts about our DNA. Uh, the length of DNA in each human cell is about two meters. So if you know the number of cells in the human body, then you can uh, calculate the total length uh, of DNA in the human body. And actually, this means that you have enough DNA in your body to stretch back and forth between the Earth and the Sun thousand times. So you can imagine that there is a lot of opportunity for variation in our DNA. Scattered on our DNA, DNA are our genes. Genes contain the instructions for making our proteins. And proteins are the real build, building blocks of our bodies. Examples of proteins include collagens, tenacins, fibrillins, and other proteins of the connective tissues, but also antibodies, hormones, ferritin, and many, many other proteins. You can look at DNA as a cookbook, with the genes being specific recipes within that cookbook and the protein being the end product of that recipe. Humans have about 21,000 uh, protein coding genes in their genome. However, this only constitutes about 2% of our total genome. The other 98% sometimes referred to as junk DNA, does not code for protein. And the function and importance of this junk DNA is not well understood. The majority of defects leading to hereditary disorders, however, are currently found in the protein encoding part of our DNA that is in or in close proximity of the genes. As already mentioned, our DNA is present in every cell of our body. Genes are translated into proteins through the production of an intermediate molecule, which is called RNA. And RNA resembles DNA, but it's a single-stranded molecule. And these RNA molecules are then translated into proteins. And most genes are not expressed into protein by every cell type. There are many specialized cell types in our body, such as red blood cells, white blood cells, sperm cells, bone cells, cells of the intestine, neurons, etc. And these specialized cells will only make certain types of protein. You can compare it with our cookbook analogy. For instance, a pastry chef uh, will uh, produce different products than a chef that works in a fish restaurant. The proteins that are important for the structure and function of our uh, connective tissue, such as the collagens, but also molecules such as proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and elastin, are made by specialized cells that are present in the connective tissue, the fibroblasts. We can find these fibroblasts in the different connective tissues, such as skin, the wall of blood vessels, tendon and ligaments. And then you can also find uh, specialized cells in bone, which are called osteoblasts and osteocytes, and in cartilage, which are called chondroblasts and chondrocytes, that make these collagens and other connective tissue proteins. 
So in summary, our DNA contains the information and construction for building proteins, which are the building blocks of our bodies. Now, as we have seen, we have a lot of DNA and your DNA is not the same as mine. In fact, our DNA is unique, like your fingerprint, and unless you have an identical twin, nobody has this, the exact same DNA as you. And ge genetic variation is a term that is used to describe the variation in the DNA sequence in each of our genomes. Genetic variation is what makes us all unique, whether in terms of hair color or even in the shape of our faces. The most common type of genetic variation are single nucleotide variants or SNPs. Each SNP represents a difference in a single DNA building block called a nucleotide or one of those four letters, A, T, G or T. For example, a SNP may replace the nucleotide cytosine, the C, with the nucleotide thymine, T, in a certain stretch of DNA. Their presence leads to different variants of the same gene. SNPs occur normally throughout a person's DNA. They occur almost once in every thousand nucleotides on average, which means that there are roughly four to five million SNPs in each person's genome. These variations may be unique or occur in many individuals. And scientists have found more than 100 million SNPs in populations around the world. Most SNPs have no effect on health or development. Since scientists have studied many people's genetic codes, we know what versions of a gene are normal variations. And this together forms a general consensus on many people's genetic codes that labs use as a reference. Anytime the lab finds something different, something that differs from the consensus, this is called a genetic variant. If this new variant of the gene does not change the end product, meaning it does the same job and, uh, as the normal version and leads to a normal protein, then this does not impact our health. And we call it a benign variant, uh, which is just a less common normal version of the same gene. If, however, this new version of the gene, gene creates a different end product, it's called pathogenic. It can lead to an abnormal product or it can lead to the absence of the protein. So it leads to changes in the function or the presence of the protein and this may cause disease. The word mutation refers to a pathogenic variant. So a mutation is a change in our DNA sequence that changes the function of a protein, either due to mistakes when the DNA is copied, and this is, for instance, the case in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and other uh, heritable connective tissue disorders, but changes in our DNA can also be the result of environmental factors such as uh, ultraviolet light and cigarette smoke, which is the case in some types of cancers, for instance, but not in EDS. For some variants, it is very clear that they disrupt the function or the structure of the protein. Some mutations, for instance, nonsense mutation, introduce a premature stop, as you can see here on the left side, and this will usually result in the production of less or no protein being made. Other types of mutations, such as frame shift mutations, will change the reading frame of the three letter codons, and this may lead to the production of a totally abnormal protein, or alternatively also to less protein being made. So if we in the lab find nonsense mutations or frame shift mutations, we usually know that these are actually mutations and not just benign variants. For some variants, however, it is not known whether 
they will lead to a normal protein or to an abnormal protein or to absence of protein. So we don't know what it means and we call this variant a variant of unknown or uncertain significance or a VUS. So variants of unknown or uncertain significance are variant forms of a gene that are identified through genetic testing, but whose significance to the function or the health of an organism is not known. So here an example, missense variants, those are variants that substitute one amino acid, so that's one building block within a protein by another amino acid. Sometimes it is not known whether these missense variants will alter the function or the structure of the protein. And I'm giving you an example here for collagens. Collagens type 1, 3 and 5, those are the main collagen types that are involved in certain types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. We know very well the structure of the uh, protein, of these collagen proteins, and we know that in the main part of the collagen, every third amino acid is a glycine, here depicted in yellow. And glycine is actually the smallest amino acid that there is. And it is very important that every third amino acid is a glycine in order to maintain the structure and the organization of the collagen in the connective tissue. We know if we find a missense variant in these collagens that lead to the substitution, the replacement of a glycine by another amino acid, that almost always it will be a pathogenic variant, meaning that it will disrupt the function and the structure of the collagen. However, for other missense variants that substitute another amino acid within the collagen molecule, the meaning of these variants is very often uncertain and those variants are often classified as variants of uncertain or unknown significance, meaning again that we don't know what it means for the health uh, of the individual. So labs will classify the variants into five categories. The benign and the likely benign variants are class one and class two respectively. The pathogenic and the likely pathogenic variants are class five and class four respectively. And a variant of uncertain significance is classified as class three. Labs will usually not report class one and class two variants. They will always report class four and class five variants. And um, it depends, um, there are some different policies whether they will report a class three variant. When we find a class three variant, sometimes it is possible uh, to perform additional studies. One of the things that we can do is do family studies. We can look whether uh, the variant is present, for instance, in the parents or in other family members, and then correlate this with uh, the clinical presentation of uh, the person who also carries the same variant. Other things that we may do is, for instance, do a skin biopsy. So remember that at the start of this talk, I explained that uh, not all genes are expressed or translated in protein by every cell, but the connective tissue genes, such as the collagen genes, um, will be expressed, for instance, in skin. So the collagens that are relevant to Ehlers-Danlos syndrome are present in skin. This means that we can take a skin biopsy for additional functional studies, uh, both uh, at the protein level, but also at the RNA level. Um, other um, tests that we can do are, for instance, an electron microscopy, which will allow us to look at the structure and the organization of the collagen fibrils in the extracellular matrix or in the connective tissue. And this can also give us uh, some additional information whether a variant can disrupt uh, the function and the structure of the collagen. For some types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, there is an urine analysis that we can do. 
So it really depends on the variant and the gene that is identified, whether or not there are additional studies that can be done. Uh, and for some variants, actually, there are really no functional studies that can be done. And the variant remains a class three variant or a variant of unknown significance. As labs test more and more people throughout the world, we learn more and more about the significance of these VUSs. And by doing so, some of them can in later times be recla reclassified as pathogenic, but others can also be reclassified as benign. It is therefore very important to stay connected with your genetic counselor who can keep you updated on your results. And with this, I would like uh, to thank you for your attention. We'll be happy to take um, questions at the end of this session. Um, and uh, yeah, always keep calm. It's just genetics. Thank you very much.